Hey everybody, it's Heather with Diamonds and Dragonflies and welcome to my weekly whip and chat. Um, this is actually going to be a standard whip and chat. I have a couple of other series and things I do that kind of turn out to be sort of like whip and chats, but um, this one is going to be a catch up of what's been going on this week, um, how I've been, how things in my house has been, what's going on in the diamond painting community um, that I'm aware of anyway, and um, try, try to be a little more joy since I've been uh, kind of uh, going through a rough time here. Um, I'm pretty sure this might be, this, this is the current state of my right wrist. So if you see that, please don't panic. I've got a blanket around it. Um, ice is about the only thing that's helping with my nerve pain. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, let's talk about what I'm working on because that is the cool, exciting part. So I am still working on just the two of us from Bella Art Diamonds. Hold on, I'm finding the picture for you. There it is. It's actually a really kind of funny story. This is artwork from David Lazal, and he had two pieces, well, he had multiple pieces of artwork that Bella Art Diamonds is converting into diamond paintings, but he has another um, image that's called Together Forever, but then this one's called Just the Two of Us, but the hearts say Together Forever. So it's kind of become a little bit of a joke, um, for at least for me. And um, Nicole, uh, the owner of Bell Art Diamonds, her and I have had a couple of small conversations about it, like, because it's confusing. I say, you know, together forever. And she's like, well, which one, you know, and, and that kind of thing. And then I'm like, oh, crap, no, just the two of us. So it's, it's kind of, it's kind of amusing. Um, or maybe it's not, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Uh, but, uh, so yeah, I am working on this. I am closing in. I so want to make sure I get this done before the end of the month. Um, I have the whole top part, or I'm sorry, the whole left column done, the whole bottom row done, and now I'm working up the right side. So I have, not counting the section I'm working on, one, two, three, four, five, five sections, I think, left. Um, all after this one, all the rest of the sections are going to kind of be a little bit bigger, um, simply because that's just how the dimensions of the kit worked out, and that's fine. Um, so I've already been working on this, and I just decided, you know what, let me just do my whip and chat. My pain level is not at a 10 right now. I'm only at a six. So hopefully I can get through this and <laughs> it'll be okay. Um, so all of my stuff's already out. So let me see what I can show you. So this is one of the cover minders I'm using. This is a beautiful snowflake cover minder from Coverminder Saban. She is a Canadian shop. She is currently closed now. She is having some health issues, I think herself. Um, but it is absolutely beautiful and I love it. Um, then I'm using this cute little, oh, get off, um, heart, uh, cover minder. Oh my God, my mind just went blank. And I'll be honest with you. I don't remember where I got this. I think it was a freebie that was put in with something that I ordered, um, from a company, but I can't remember which one, but it's adorable. And then I am using part of the Bella Art Day Nicole Express cover minder, they have a train car series. This is the insert for the train car. So this is the train car, which is I've been using as my trash minder. No, please don't like see all that trash and go, oh my God, that's how much trash is in this. No, 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 no. This is trash from like six kits. So <laughs> this, this kit itself actually has had such little trash. And the trash that I have had has almost entirely been from the enhancement drills that I chose to add on to the kit. So yeah, don't don't go freaking out. This no, that's not um, not the issue. But this fits inside it. So here, let me see if I can set this without sticking it fast. So this goes inside it as your little train car. Woo woo, choo 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 choo. There's a magnet on the underside 
of this so you can that's inside it so it actually magnetizes to my caddy here can you guys see that yeah you can see that but then i took this off oops static people it's real and then i'm using it as a cover minder on my thing because it's cute and i want to look at it um I am kitted up into my Bella Art Day Nicole trays like usual, but like I said, I'm using some enhancements that I've added on. So I'm using the Bella Essential tray that comes with every Bella Art Diamonds kit. So I'm utilizing that for my enhancements. Um, the pen I am using is this beautiful purple glitter pen with some confetti tossed in, inside it. Uh, this is a pen that I got as a mystery bag from Enablers Outpost. You might hear me say that a lot. A lot of the pens that I've gotten from Enablers Outpost, because I miss out on the Saturday drops, um, are when she does the mystery grab bags of pens. I almost always jump on it. So I've done, I think, three now. Or is it only two? It might be two. It might be three. I can't remember. It's two or three that I have jumped on and uh, gotten. But this was one of them, and I loved it. And it matches the painting. It's purple, and it's valentine -y. Um, I'm using the, I think this is the eight placer, uh, thin multi-placer from Diamond Art Club and the single placer from Diamond Art Club. Um, my cover minders are from Bee's Crafty Corner. She is a, another small shop from Canada. Um, I love her cover minders. Just to show you, these cover minders that I have pulled off here, these have come off the canvas. I've put them down and back up three or four times and what do you notice? there is no curving on any of the edges. So they're not peeling, they're not curling, curling up, uh, words are hard. Um, so I love whatever material she uses, is really sturdy and does a great job. She also has started something new since she reopened her shop that I'm in love with. Um, she is doing a weekly theme and any of those cover minders during that theme are 20% off. So right now she's doing three uh, bee themed paper she has and I had to order the bees and, and wildflowers. So that was awesome. Um, if you are US and you're concerned about the shipping, talk to her. She does refund for any overages and shipping cost. And her and I were able to work out a little deal to save me some money on shipping. And I'm pretty sure she would put that to anyone in the US. So give her a call and or um, send her a message on Etsy, Bee's Crafty Corner, if um, shipping is an issue, and I'm sure you guys can work something out. I love her stuff. Um, my putty I'm using is from Butterfly Effect Wears. It is Cranberry Sparkle. I wanted a Cranberry Sparkle pen in their pen drop, but alas, I was not fast enough. So I settled on just ordering the putty. I've just been using it. I started using it on this kit, and as you can see, I have a ton left. Um, so it lasts a very long time. And then the wax in my single placer, I am using, uh, is this, what is this? Granny's Apple Pancakes from Not Your Mama's Mud, uh, which is put out by Whimsical Daisy. Um, yeah, I got this like six months ago, and it still smells amazing. Yeah. Yep, still smells amazing. Um, I'm enhancing, the painting came with, hang on, uh, one, two, three, four ABs to start with, but I'm doing Blinging in the New Year, and this is my event kit for that. So you had to add at least two enhancement packs. Well, you know me, go big or go home. So I added five. So I added an AB, two crystals, a pixie, or I'm sorry, three crystals and a pixie dust. Um, I think it's turning out amazing and I can't wait till it's done and I get to show you guys all. So I think that's, we did putty, cover minders, enhancements, my trays, my pen. Yeah, okay, I think we're done. All right, cool. So I have my beverage in my Jenny Rose Designs tumbler. It's a dragon, a snow dragon she did for me. Um, I do think this is still available, this image. I'm not positive, but I think it is. Um, but I love her tumblers. It's all I drink out of. So go check her out on Etsy. And in case I get the munchies, I do have a blueberry streusel muffin nearby. Um, I'm taking steroids for my arm. And if you've ever taken prednisone before, you know it gives you the munchies. I want to show this. I'm going to stick it in the lid. 
this is from my enhancement pack. So this is not something that came, but I've never seen this before. But look at that. Isn't that hysterical? That little piece of, I mean, it's like a giant form something or other crystal. It's really cool looking. But yeah, that was in one of my crystal bags from DP with sparklers. But I just thought it was cool. It didn't even, you know, I wasn't even like, oh my God, what's in there? It was like, oh, look at the pretty. So yeah. So, but we're going to put it in the trash drill. Okay. So how are all of you? How are you guys doing? Whoop. Sorry. I'm sorry about that. I hit you and sent you like on a whirlwind. Um, I hope you all are doing okay. I sure as hell hope you guys are having a better weekend than I'm at, than I am. What color am I doing in? Okay. Symbol five. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a weekend. Um, I guess I'll just dive in. But, oh, well, first, please leave down in the comments how you're doing, because I do care. I really do. Um, I know a lot of people say that, and you might think that, well, do they really? Yes, I do. Um, my channel has kind of taken off in the over the past two weeks. Um, I've almost tripled my viewership, which has been amazing or triple, no, double, double, yeah, no, yes, I don't know, I don't remember, it's after 10 o'clock, people, and it's math, and that's just hard, um, anyway, it has, it has kind of exploded, and I've been, I went from having no one commenting on any of my videos, to a lot of people commenting on my videos, and I absolutely love it. Um, please do not stop. You have no idea how relevant you are making me feel. I think that is the best way to put it. And I, I would love to get into that a little more, but I want to save that for a discussion to have with my Sunday mental health series that started today. I'm actually filming this Sunday night. Um, I plan on this going up on Tuesday, um, my whip and chat. But um, like I said, I'm taking advantage of not being at a 10 for my pain level, which is where I've been off and on this whole past week, especially today. Um, so yeah, uh, so I'm going to save that conversation for that series. It's more appropriate, I think, to delve into it there. But just know that I am trying to make sure that I respond to every single comment that is left for me. Will I always be able to keep up with that and do that? I have no idea. No clue. You know, it's one thing right now when you're talking about, I think I've responded to about maybe... 20, 25 comments over the past three days, as opposed to if for some reason I should end up with like a thousand comments or even a hundred comments. I, I don't know. I might not be able to get to them all. I might not be able to send a personal message to each and every person. It might just be liking your comment or hearting your comment or something like that. I want to try to have that not be the case, but I am just human. And right now I'm working with one hand that is not my dominant hand, hence the fact that I have been single placing over half of this kit has been done single placing with my non-dominant hand. So I want to ask, do you guys do that sometimes? Do you sometimes stab down onto the, the thing, think you have a drill and then press down on your canvas and go, what? well, why isn't there a drill there? only to realize that you never actually picked up the drill in the first place? Um, or, or is that just my bad eyesight and, you know, something insane that I do? Um, that's probably the case. Uh, let me know. So there's, there's the first thing I want you to report on down in the comments <laughs> or the second one. Um, so let's talk about nerves and my arm. So, okay. I can't remember how much of this I've shared in other videos I've done, so I'm going to kind of just do a quick gloss, just, just a little quick timeline rundown here 
of what happened, especially in case you are new to my channel and you don't know what I'm talking about or what has happened to my arm. So I have severe back issues, okay? Um, I've been seeing a neurosurgeon and I have had um, cervical surgery this past July. I am looking at having uh, thoracic and lumbar surgeries in 2024. Um, but one of the things that was happening is that my arms kept going numb. My hands would go numb. Um, my right side more than my left. So my neurosurgeon sends me for what is called an EMG, which is a nerve study test um, for my arms because I had cervical neck surgery where they removed two of my vertebrae and put in plates and screws along with a donor um, bone graft to replace the vertebrae in my neck, okay? So I had that done July 27th. Well, that was supposed to fix the numbness issue. Well, guess what? Uh, it did not. It did not fix the hand numbingness that was going on. So then they wondered if it was a nerve issue or a cervical issue. So they sent me for this EMG. Okay. So I go and have the EMG. Let me just start by saying that unless you absolutely, positively, beyond any shadow of a doubt, have to have an EMG done, please don't do it. Spare yourself. It is single-handedly the most painful procedure, like diagnostic test that I have ever had done. I'm not even going to go into what they did to my body, to my arms, um, because it, it, it literally would gross you out. Um, my husband was in the room with me when I had, I had this done on my legs before the next surgery, and then I had it done on my arms after the next surgery. When I went in and had it done on my legs, my husband is a Marine, okay? He is an ex-Marine, but my husband was a Marine. He does not get queasy. He does not get sick at the sight of anything. He is a very tough, strong, you know, um, who ya, you know, guy, okay? I think it's time to put more wax on. Hold on. Um, so the fact that he had to leave the room because he thought he was going to get sick from what they were doing to me to do this test. That when I went, had to go back to have it done on my legs or on my arms, I asked him if he was going to be able to stay with me because I knew what I was walking into. But I didn't really have much choice because guess what? You can't diamond paint when your hands are numb and you can't feel them. Um... And for some people that don't diamond paint for mental health reasons, you might be like, okay, well, what, what's the big deal? Well, it is a big deal because when I can't diamond paint, I can't regulate my emotions. Once again, not going to delve into that. That's for next Sunday or the Sunday after in the mental health series. Um, but this was of high importance to me, the ability to be able to diamond paint. So off to have the test we go have the test the test shows that there's nothing wrong with from a cervical neck standpoint that's causing the numbness it is coming from me having carpal tunnel syndrome oh yay something else I have well my whole thing was but I'm not having pain I had um what they called carpal tunnel in my left arm years ago. Never had it surgically done, but they said that most likely I had carpal tunnel. Actually, what I had was tendonitis, but that it could be caused because I most likely had some carpal tunnel. Um, okay. 
I was not having pain. I just had my arms going numb. Well, that'll stop. They're going numb because the nerve's being impinged because you have carpal tunnel. Okay. Assumed I would have to be referred to a hand surgeon. Instead, my neurosurgeon comes and says, no, I do carpal tunnel surgery. Oh, okay. Well, that that's convenient. That way I don't have to get on a list and wait for, you know, because like, Right nowadays, trying to get an appointment with a specialist, you know, like my husband's been trying to get an appointment with a nurse, with neurology since September. His appointment is February 6th. That was the soonest. Well, it started out February 26th, but they did have a cancellation and he was able to move it up to February 6th. Woohoo! But yes, we've been trying to get him in there. I mean, his cardiologist has even called neurology and said, hey, I need this guy to get in like now. Sorry, we don't have anything. He's at the top of the list. If somebody cancels, spots his. Okay. So, you know, I'm going into the neurosurgeon for a follow-up from the test, and I'm thinking to myself, well, hell, they're going to, you know, if I got to see a hand surgeon, it might be months before this gets taken care of. Nope, he does it. Okay, great. How convenient. One-stop shop. So we schedule the surgery for December 27th. Happy birthday, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to me. Um, but you know what? That's okay. My husband's already off the whole week, um, so he's not going to have to take additional time off work. Both of my children are going to be home and visiting, or well, two out of three of my children are going to be home and visiting. It was going to cut Samantha's Samantha was originally expected to return to her residential program on the 27th of December. Instead, she was going to have to go back on the 26th. So it was, it was shortening her day by one, which ended up not even happening because she got COVID. Um, she was diagnosed and tested positive with COVID with symptoms on the 22nd of December. So therefore, she could not come at all because I couldn't be exposed pre-surgery to someone with COVID. I would have had to reschedule my surgery. So I have the surgery. Everything's fine. Everything's, everything went well. Woohoo! We're all good. Fast forward to last Monday. Well, actually, we'll go to last Sunday. So last Sunday, my arm started aching and I was having nerve pain. There is a very big difference between pain pain and nerve pain. Pain pain, usually you can take ibuprofen, Tylenol, um, narcotics, something. Hence the fact that I have pain pain in my spine and therefore I am on a pain management regimen with a pain management doctor to regulate and control the pain in my spine with opioids. Um, that's not touching this pain because nerve pain is different. Well, I contact my neurosurgeon on Monday. I'm told high priority, someone will call you back. Okay. Monday comes and goes, I don't get a phone call. Well, it just so happened that that Monday at three o'clock, I had my normal monthly pain management appointment with my pain doctor. So I brought it up to him or her. I told her what was going on, how I was feeling. And she said, well, I can put you on Lyrica, which is to treat nerve pain. However, it will take a week or two before it, it starts to actually work, okay? So I started the Lyrica. Tuesday morning, and my pain at this point in time on Monday was, it, it was a 9-10. I tolerate a lot of pain. I have a very high tolerance for pain because I live with it daily. 
Um, so I'm woken up Tuesday morning from neurosurgery calling me to tell me that they have ordered an urgent MRI for me that I need to call imaging immediately to get in to have my arm scanned and have an MRI done on my right wrist and hand. Okay. I call them. They say, can you be here at 1230? Well, it snowed here and we got four inches of snow overnight that day. But my husband's like, yes, I can clean out the car and we can, we can get there. It's fine. Okay. Yes, I can be there. So I go, I have the MRI. Before I even get home, the radiologist has uploaded my test results and I'm getting a message for my patient portal that my test results are ready. Well, whereas the urgent MRI was sent because my neurosurgeon was afraid that one of my nerves had actually um, like, what was the word he used, frayed? Um, or was no longer intact and that was causing the issue. That was not the case, which that was good. That, that was a positive. But however, it showed chronic degenerative damage to my median nerve along with hyperintensive signaling of the median nerve. Well, what the hell does that mean? So I call the neurosurgeon's office. Okay, my test results came up. Can someone please explain this to me in English? What it is, how we treat it, how we fix it, because I, I can't live like this. I literally could not use my arm for anything, and I'm three weeks post-op. I'm supposed to be able to do everything I was doing before. And instead, I'm, I'm in the fetal position crying because it hurts so bad that I don't even want to be touched. So the physician assistant will call you back. Okay. So about 45 minutes later, the physician assistant calls me back and she explains to me that what hyperintensive signaling is, is say you, you prick your finger. You're going to go, ow. And 10 seconds later, you're fine. Someone who has hyperintensive signaling of the median nerve pricks their finger and it's like, oh my God, oh my God, make it stop, make it stop. Holy crap, that hurts. It's almost like you severed and cut off part of their finger. That is how it works. It takes whatever pain you have and it intensifies it by 300%. Why wasn't this happening before? Well, turns out that when you have carpal tunnel syndrome, the shaft that your nerves transmit signals through has collapsed upon itself. It's pinching them off. So therefore, those signals are not making it to the brain, which makes a lot of sense because I, was, I am also a type 2 diabetic. And I was kind of wondering why when I would use my right hand to do my finger pricks in the morning, I never felt it. It never hurt. And I'm like, wow, do I just have, you know, calluses built up or something and that's why it doesn't hurt? Um, no, it didn't hurt because the carpal tunnel was preventing pain signals being sent to my brain. So a little, little biology lesson here for you. When, you. when you feel pain, it's because a part of your body, you have affected the nerves and they have sent a signal to your brain that says you are in pain and how to respond to being in that pain. Well, my body was not, none of the signals were getting through. Now they can. Why didn't this happen immediately after? I mean, I did have nerve pain like the first couple of days. And they said, that's fine. That's just irritation. You know, we moved them around. We did stuff to them, etc. Well, they're telling me that it was because they were inflamed and recovering from the surgery. Well, now that that swelling has gone down, they are freely sending the signals. But they have been so damaged, so inflamed, and so irritated that they are causing this hyperintensive signaling.
well, put it back. That literally was my next wor words. Put my carpal tunnel back. Um, we can't do that. That we, we cut it. It's gone. It's adios. Well, what do we do? Well, you should only have flare-ups a few times a year, and you will probably need to treat them with steroids. We're going to call you in a steroid pack. Taking the Lyrica that your pain management doctor prescribed is a very good start. That will help try to prevent flare-ups, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, I'm supposed to be having this arm done, as soon as the right one is completely healed and I have full functional use of it again. Well, I'm seriously thinking people that uh, I'm gonna have to have conversation with my neurosurgeon and say, you know what? I need to have that MRI done on my left hand first because if I have the same issue going on in my left hand, we're not doing that carpal tunnel surgery. That, that's not going to happen because I'm not going to lose use of both of my hands. Yeah, no, not, not in a million bazillion years are we going to do that. So that's going to be an interesting conversation that I'm going to be having when I meet with my neurosurgeon again on February 5th, if not sooner. I say that because, so they called in the steroid. My husband went and got it same day. So Tuesday, I had the steroids. Started taking them Tuesday night. Wednesday, I had no pain. Zero pain. I was in heaven. No pain, no issues. I was a diamond paint and full. Everything was great. I, I, it was fantastic. Thursday, no pain. Fabulous. Excellent. Okay, cool. This is working. I can I can deal with this. Woohoo! I am excited. Friday, no pain. Saturday, about halfway through the day, the pain started coming back and it was coming back in waves. And when I have this pain, what I'm actually experiencing is a throbbing pulsating oops <sighs> all right that's a mess I'm gonna have to clean up in a little bit but we're not gonna worry about it now um it is a throbbing pulsating aching constant pain of sharp stabbing signals going from let me get my arm out here Going from here all the way up my arm to my shoulder. That is what I am experiencing. Any movement of my arm, any attempt to use my hand causes massive intensive pain. I mean, to the point that I am in tears and I'm thinking to myself that it would just be better if they would just cut my arm off. Just make it stop. Um, today, yesterday, it was, it was coming and going in waves. And pain-wise, it was a 7-8. I woke up at six o'clock in the morning, um, this morning, screaming in the most intensive pain that I have experienced since I had rotator cuff surgery on my left rotator cuff in 2018 and the nerve block wore off. And of course it happens on a Saturday or on a Sunday. I have sent a very long detailed message to my neurosurgeon that hopefully they will see first thing in the morning. 
Um, the steroid pack is done. It was a taper pack. Um, so it's, it's done. Um, I have not been able to use my arm at all today. I have spent a good deal of the day in tears because the pain has been a 10 the entire day. There it is. I'm like, I saw a drill that doesn't belong there. All right, let me grab a drink. So I guess we will see what happens tomorrow when they call me back. When hopefully they call me back too. So I will keep you guys posted on that front. All right. Well, let's stop talking about yucky things and let's talk. Let, let's vent and rant about something else. Um, let's talk about my son. I don't talk about William a lot. Um, we're going to talk about my son and the cost of college. And this actually involves my daughter too, um, since she is still currently in college. So my son graduated high school June of 2017. He was accepted to Virginia Tech's architecture program in February of 2017. It was a very great honor. Um, that year, they had a thousand students apply for the architecture program and they took 99. And my son happened to be one of the 99. I was the proudest mom you could ever imagine. Um, we were officially Hokies. If you are a UVA Wahoo, sorry. <laughs> but let's go Hokies. Okay. If you are a Wahoo, you will understand about the rivalry between the two teams. So if not, sorry for bringing in a football reference. So anyway, um, William received a top-notch five-year education because the architecture program is a five-year program. Because of him attending a school like Virginia Tech, the notoriety helped him land a job. William had a job um, three days after graduation. He graduated May of 2022, and he had an interview the following Monday, and he graduated on a Friday. The very following Monday, he had an interview with a company in an architecture firm in Maryland. We live in Southern PA, so it was about an hour away from him. Um, but it was owned and operated by a former Hokie, a Virginia Tech grad. Um, they told him when he interviewed that it would be two or three days before he heard anything. Well, two or three hours later, they hired him. He has been there ever since. It is a fantastic company. Um, they very much take care of their employees. Pay, I mean, my son out of the gate was making more money than my husband makes per year at the time. My husband has since gotten a raise, and so that's not the case anymore. But at the time when he was hired, he literally was making more money a year than my husband was supporting our whole family. Well, for six months, William didn't have any student loans to pay. William was smart. He was utilizing as much of his paychecks as he could to pay down credit card debt. He bought a car um, so that he was not having to borrow my car that got really good gas mileage. It was a very good commuter car. It was within his... Um, okay, I am going to start to complain about drills. And these are ones from Bella Art. I don't know if this is, somebody please tell me in the comments, is when these drills stick together like this, is that a static issue? If so, then that's not on Bella manufacturer, that's on the weather. But I don't know what causes that, but I keep picking up these drills that are like two drills hugging. The flat sides are attached to each other. So they're like little balls as opposed to separated drills. I mean, which I have a grinder. I can use the grinder That's the, to separate them. That's not a big deal. It's just hard when I only have one hand. So, <sighs> breathe, Heather, breathe. Vent about college costs. So, 
by the time, and yes, I know you can see pink drills in here. I had an issue and an incident and I just figured they were different color. I could just pick around them. Um, I didn't feel like sorting them out. But anyway, um, my son, you know, graduated from college, $187,000 in debt. Yes, you heard me correctly. $187,000 $187, in debt. Um, it cost, it started out at $48,000 a year for him to go to Virginia Tech. It ended with it being $56,000 a year for him to go to Virginia Tech. My son had to take on a second, a second job. So he not only works his full-time job Monday through Friday that he drives an hour each way to, but on top of that, he works four nights a week at Walmart stocking shelves. What the hell, people? <laughs> I'm just like... How, how is this okay? How can this even be happening? It's so frustrating that for our, the children of today to get a decent job, making decent money, they have to pay a fortune to go to college. You know, back in my day, when I was, you know, starting out and looking for jobs and whatnot, companies would train you. You didn't have to have a college degree. Companies don't do that anymore. They don't invest in their employees. They want you to have all your knowledge so that you can walk in, they can throw shit at you and say, all right, go for it, see ya. And you either sink or swim. They don't offer training. They don't give students that don't have degrees jobs. Do you know how many people that I have worked with that go and tell me that they have a college degree? And it might it's not even in what they're doing, but they have a top college degree. And you know what? They can't do their damn jobs. That here I was without a college degree having to fix their problems and do their job for them. It's a shame you can't see my face because the indignation on my face is just, I just realized the face I made. <laughs> It, it just, it dumbfounds me. It flabbergasts me where the logic is in all of this. Um, so, I'm still on my son's checking account. He ha We left it that way while he was in school. We've just never gotten around to changing it. And now he looks at it that, you know, if I need to transfer money to him or whatever, it's just easier. Well, I'm looking at my bank account tonight and I'm looking at his and I'm like, um, Houston, we have a problem. His student loan payments are due tomorrow. Technically, they were due today, but because it's not a non-banking day, it'll be tomorrow. He doesn't have enough money in his account to pay all five student loans. I text him. I'm like, hey, hon. And he's like, I'm at work. I said, yeah, I know you got a second. He goes, you can text me. I can't call. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, are you aware that you're $252 short in your bank account to cover your student loan payments tomorrow? Uh, say what? He's like, no, mom, you're wrong. I've My paycheck from Walmart is coming in tomorrow. No, William, it's not. You got paid on the 16th from Walmart. You will not get paid again until the 30th from Walmart. No, because I got paid from Arium, the company he works for. 
the architecture firm. He's like, um, no, I get paid opposite weeks. I said, you, you had been getting paid opposite weeks. There is five weeks in January and his day job, the architecture firm, they pay on the 15th and the 30th of the month. So he only gets paid, he gets 24 paychecks. He gets paid twice a month. Well, that when you have five weeks, that changes stuff for the people that get paid every two weeks. So whereas he thought that he had another paycheck coming in this week, no, he doesn't. Well, my son is a worrier. He starts freaking out. Um, I mean, we're just texting back and forth, but I can tell that he's like hyperventilating at work. And I'm like, breathe, William, breathe. And he's like, mom, how could I have screwed everything up? What am I going to do? Um, I refuse to borrow money from anyone. And I said, good, because I don't have any to give you. Um, what, what am I going to do? And I said, well, we're going to wait and see what the, how the bank handles it. There are five separate transactions. It is hit or miss whether or not um, the bank that we bank with will go ahead and pay a transaction that will overdraw the account. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Crap. Oh, people, I just noticed that I'm putting the color six on top of the symbol E. Are you all yelling at me and saying, uh, Heather, wrong color, wrong color. Okay. I know I only did it for a few. It's just, this is very difficult for me to do with my left hand. Okay. All right. Breathe, Heather. Yes, I'm hyperventilating over to the diamond art. Um, so anyway, I'm like, William, it happens. It's okay. I mean, this boy's been taking care of his... Okay. Oh, good. I only did it for one. Did I only do it for one? Is this one a six, two? <gasps> yes. Okay. Yay. I caught myself after one. Yay. Okay. I'm a happy camper now. Um, he's like thinking the world is going to end. Like the Gestapo is going to come out and get him because he might be late on a student loan payment. I said, William, one of two things is going to happen. Either one, the bank is going to go ahead and they're going to pay them all. And therefore, all of your payments will be made. Nothing will be late. And all will be right with the world. Your bank account will be negative. But you are getting paid next Tuesday. You have credit card that you can utilize for gas and food and any necessities that you might need in the course of the week. It will be a tight week, but it will be fine. Well, what if they don't pay it? I said, okay, well, once again, there are five individual transactions. I said, depending on how they come in, we'll determine how many get paid. Nothing is going to happen with them being a week late. They're not going to report it to the credit bureau unless you go 30 days past due. Um, there was a snafu with his direct deposit when he first started and signed up to start paying his student loans. Um, and they ended up being four days late. There was no late fees involved. They said they don't charge a late fee unless he goes 30 days past due. There is a grace period. So I said, it will be fine. I said, you will be able to then pay, pay whichever one or ones, depending on how they come in, because they're all different amounts. Um, I said, you will be able to pay them when you get paid next Tuesday. Well, isn't that going to screw up everything for February? We will sit down. We will look at your um, finances and your bills, and we will figure it out. You just have to keep in mind that for a couple of months, you're going to be getting paid twice in the same week. You're going to be getting your Walmart check and your... Arium checks the same week as opposed to every other week for a couple of months and then it resorts itself out and it'll go back to the every other week he texts me and he's like 
you know, it really sucks to be an adult. <laughs> and I was like, you are preaching to the choir, honey. You are preaching to the choir. You know, it, it tickles me how all these teenagers of today, you know, I want my independence. I want to be free. Why don't want you bossing me around? You know, I, I, I can't wait to get out of here. And they don't realize how hard it is out there. Speaking of that, let's complain. Let's talk about the cost of groceries. Um, for the past three months, I've been doing 90% of my grocery shopping via Walmart Plus and having it delivered to my house. Um, because of my back, I am not really in the capable of walking around the store for a long period of time. Um, because of my hand, I, I mean, I can't go by myself. I have to drag my husband with me for physical reasons. I can't load the bags in the car. I can't carry them into the house, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it has actually been a couple of months since I have physically stepped foot into a grocery store. Well, we needed to stock up on some meat. Our, we have a standalone freezer. We were out of meat. Um, I wanted some fresh vegetables and some fresh produce and I don't ever order those things from Walmart Plus because so many times I get stuff that I would never okay yeah no I would never have picked this out of the store the fruit is questionable the vegetables are questionable the meat is questionable um, I don't even like ordering milk from Walmart Plus because of course they just grab the first container that's in the front which is usually giving me a gallon of milk that's going to expire in like four days. And there's just me and my husband. And I don't drink milk. My husband does occasionally. But I just use milk like in my cereal, if I make pudding, um, you know, from the box, you know, cooking reasons. I don't physically drink milk. So I'm like, so... Like I said, on Saturday, as the day went on, is when my arm started hurting. So we we set out in the morning. My arm is feeling fine at the time. And we go to the grocery store. I walk in, and there's a display of strawberries. I'm like, oh, my God, I could die for some strawberries. Hold on, drink break. Well, um, $9.00. Nine dollars for a pound of strawberries, and then half of them were still like green. They weren't even fully ripe. I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you seriously kidding me right now? We get to the meat. I told my husband to go because he's he's the meat cooker. I said, all right, I'm gonna go down this aisle. Let's divide and conquer here. I'm gonna go down this aisle. Get some boxed and canned goods that I need from down this aisle. Can you go look at the meat? I'd like to get some ground beef, some chicken breasts, um, some ham steaks, some pork chops. And what was the other thing? Oh, and um, sausages. And I mean like Italian sausages. You know, the, the long ones that you like put on a sub roll and that kind of thing. So he's like, okay. Well... You know, like five, five, ten minutes later, I don't know how long it is, it, he comes back over and I'm like, okay, do they not have any meat? Because he's got nothing in his hand. He's like, um, well, I went and checked stuff out, but you might want to come and take a look yourself. Okay, why? And he's like, well, what do we need the most of? And I said, well, I guess I'd say ground beef because we want to make chili today. And I bought like some taco kits to make tacos. Um, but I need the ground beef. And I was thinking about, ooh, you know what? I didn't buy the stuff for that. I wanted to make manwich. I have been so hungry for sloppy joes. It's not funny. But anyway, um, I digress. Um, <laughs> sloppy joe rant. Um, so I guess ground beef. And he goes, well, uh, it's $35 a package. What? What are you talking about? He takes me over and he shows me. They are family packs, which is what we normally buy. 4.69 
pounds of ground beef for $35. Yes, I will repeat that again. $35. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking in my head, okay, I need two pounds for the chili. I need a pound for the mamwich. And I need a pound for the tacos. So that leaves less than a pound of ground beef left over. And I've only made three meals. And it's going to cost me $25 just for the meat. Okay. What, what choice do I have? Absolutely none. Um, pork chops was a little better. We were able to get a big pack of pork chops. Um, that was a little more reasonable. I think that was like $21. Um, chicken breasts were, for skinless, boneless, were $3 a pound. I'm used to paying... $2 a pound, um, so not terrible, terrible, but, you know, a, a family pack of, and I buy the family packs because we like to freeze it to have extra, um, you know, but that was $18, $19 a pack. I had looked at getting some wings because my husband makes wings from scratch, and I was like, well, let's grab some wings so that we have them for the Super Bowl, and... Um, they're usually way cheaper. Oh yeah, no. I'm like, okay, I'm not paying $25 for one pack of wings. Yet yeah, not doing that. I'll look at possibly doing frozen wings or hell, I can order wings from like Wingstop or Buffalo Wild Wings for cheaper than that or the same price and then we don't have the mess of making them. Um... Another thing I noticed when I was... Okay, I'm back, guys. Sorry about that interruption. Um, we had a dog emergency. My husband let two of the, our three dogs outside. Uh, the one came back, and Rhea was not responding to my husband. He wasn't quite sure whether she had even gone out because basically he opened the back door. He went into the bathroom, and assumed that she went out as well. Well, she did. And uh, so we went through the house. She wasn't here. Sorry, I'm out of breath. Um, we went downstairs. He opened the back door. He started calling her, and then she comes running. And the I deal with the dogs more than my husband does, on average. And I have learned with Rhea that... She comes to the door and is ready to come in when she's done. She is part German Shepherd. So she scopes out the yard. She doesn't like if she catches the scent of another animal. She needs to investigate to make sure that that animal is not in our yard. So bunnies, squirrels, groundhogs, beware. Um... And she takes her time in finding a place where she's going to do a poop. And whereas my other dogs, they might need to poop, but if we call them, they will instantly come back inside. Only to, of course, need to go back outside in like 20 minutes. But um, Rhea doesn't come in until she's done. Well, she just wasn't done. So she had finished by the time we opened the door again. And she was already headed back to the house when um, my husband started calling for her again and stuff. So crisis averted. We worry with Rhea because she is an escape artist. She is a jumper and she has no qualms if she needs to track something that takes her, sorry, I bumped the camera. Um, if she has to chase something that has requires her to jump over the fence she she will jump over the fence and it's a six foot high privacy fence um 
So, and she currently does not have her collar on her with her tags and everything. Um, she is microchipped, but yeah, so it, it was a little bit of a concern, but all is right. So yeah, I, let's see, I complained about college costs. I complained about the cost of groceries. Um, you know, I'm just like, how are people supposed to eat? You know, how are they supposed to feed themselves? I just, it, it's just mind boggling to me. You know, my electric bill's gone up, my gas bill's gone up, my water bills have increased. And that's just all from yearly raises. That's not even from, oh, well, I'm using more. No, I'm not. Um, you know, I don't know how people are supposed to survive. It's just, it's ridiculous how much everything is costing. Um, and there's a huge group of people that fall into that tax bracket where you make too much to qualify for any type of services. However, you don't make enough to not need the help of services. So it's, you know, it's a whole big thing. I mean, don't get me wrong, we're, you know, it's it's fine. It was just it was just sticker shock, you know? Just 100% pure sticker shock seeing the price of some of these groceries. Um, I was still happy that I came in under my grocery budget. Um, not quite sure how that happened. I had a grocery budget of $250. It was $241. Um, and we have a good amount of food that will, you know, last us for at least a week or two, possibly three, um, you know, kind of thing. So now it was funny, though, because we get home and my husband starts making the chili and he's making his homemade chili in the crock pot. And he gets, we bought one of those. You now you get that sleeve of peppers with the three different colors. It was a yellow, orange, and red. And he's pulling the peppers out and cutting them up. And he gets to the red pepper, which is his favorite. And he goes and cuts the top off of it and looks inside and it's black. Yeah. The inside of the red pepper was black. Now, granted, from the outside, it looked totally fine. Didn't look like there was any rot on it at all. So it is not a slight on the grocery store that, you know, hey, you had, you know, moldy produce on your, on your shelves. It, inside out, but it was just, it was black inside the red pepper. So he took it back today, showed them, had our receipt. They said, go grab another red pepper. And he did, and you know, all was right with the world. Now, granted, it was too late to put the pepper in the chili. So um, much to my husband's dismay, there was only yellow and orange peppers in the chili, which my husband makes great chili. And every time he makes it, it's a little different. It was rocking this time. So it was, it was good chili. Um, the last couple of times he's made it, it just really hasn't had, I like my chili to have a slight bite or like kick to it after the effect, you know, after the fact. Um, and the last couple of times, it just didn't have that bite or kick, but it it did this time. It was really good. Um, I'm very lucky that I have a man that loves to cook and cooks for me because otherwise I'd probably weigh 500 pounds and I would just be eating like SpaghettiOs and Chef Boyardee ravioli every day or mac and cheese. So, um, fortunately, that is not the case. So I think we've been going for an hour, possibly more now. Um, so just going to do a quick rundown. Um, Athena's doing much better. Her HGE, the hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, seems to have run its course. Um, she definitely lost a great deal of weight because she's looking kind of thin. But her spirit is back. She's eating back. Um, she's back to eating normal food. Um, much to her dismay, she like looks at her food bowl and looks at us like, um, where is my rice and chicken? Cause I would rather have that please. Um, so, <laughs> um, that's how we know she's doing better. Um, cause she's back to her sassy self. Um, Atlas is Atlas. He's being a pain in the butt as usual. Um, but then he has to be so daggone. Oh, so, okay. Cute story. I wish I had a picture to insert here for you. So this morning I go and I let 
let him out by himself. He, Atlas sleeps in. Okay, yes, I have a dog that literally sleeps in. Atlas doesn't get out of bed until 10, 11 o'clock. So he sleeps in bed with us, and no matter what time we get up, yeah, no, he's not getting his furry little butt up until 10, 11 o'clock. He is an old English bulldog. So I've already taken and let the girls out. Ray and Athena have already gone out. They've already gone to the bathroom. They've had their medication. I took Woo's, um, we call Atlas Woo, that's his nickname. So I took Wu's medicine up to him and gave it to him while he was still in bed. I mean, eyes closed. He's still asleep, but he opens his mouth to take his food or take his cheeses that his medication, daily medication is wrapped in. He's, he's something else, I tell you. But anyway, um, he goes back to sleep. I feed the dogs. Um, I put food in all their bowls. You know, we're all good. Well, he gets up around 1030. He comes down and he wants to go outside. Well, I let him out by himself. So I let him out while he's outside. We have a fenced in yard. Um, while he's outside, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm getting myself a drink. I'm making myself some apple and cinnamon Quaker oatmeal for breakfast because I was craving that this morning for some strange odd reason. Um, Cause I don't typically do oatmeal, but I've been like having this gnawing craving for it. But anyway, um, and I hear him at the back door that he wants to come back in. So I go to let him in and he's pure white. Now he is a white and brindle mixed old English bulldog. His whole back is covered in snow. His face is covered in snow. He is currently wearing a holiday bow tie around his neck. It is covered in snow. And I know for a fact that if he's like that, that means that he was out rolling around in the snow. And I'm like, oh my God, I wish I would have been able to see it so I could film it and I could have put it in this video to show you guys because I guarantee it was the cutest thing that I would have ever seen. So yes, so he went outside and rolled around in the snow. <laughs> um, and then came back in the house looking like the abominable snow dog. So it was so funny. Um, so, so very funny. Um, what have I been watching? Um, I have been binge watching Madam Secretary. I have no idea what season I'm on. I want to say season three, I think. It might be four, but I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's three. Um, I just love that show. I'm so sorry that they took it off the air. Um, the, and I can't even think of his name right now. Um, Tia Leone plays the lead. She's Madam Secretary. She is amazing. I love Tia Leone, but I cannot think of the guy that plays her husband. <sighs> yeah, I can't think of who plays Hank McCord. Um, is it Hank? Yeah. No. I don't know. Mr. McCord. Um I I can't I can't think of who it, who he is. What his name is. Um he was on Wings as well back in the early 80s. The chemistry between the two of them as husband and wife is amazing. Henry, Henry McCord. That's what it is. Okay. Um I knew it would come to me. Um their chemistry between the two of them as husband and wife and how they play off, of, it's amazing. It is literally exactly like how I would want, how I wish my marriage was, to be honest with you. Um, it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's remarkable. And I just, I love, love, love the show. Um, so I've been enjoying binge watching that. Um, I do want to get back to watching Yellowstone, which this is my first time through for Yellowstone. Um, I I have to do something. I ordered Peacock on our Roku, and so now I can't watch it upstairs through Peacock on my PlayStation because it's linked to the Roku, so I got to change the path. I don't know. I, I have all these steps. I found an article about how to fix it, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, it hasn't been a top priority. So I do need to do that. I had started rewatching Buffy. Um, I think I'm on season two or three of Buffy, 
but then I switched over to Yellowstone and then I switched over to Madam Secretary when I couldn't watch Yellowstone. So I've been kind of bouncing all around. Um, my husband and I did, we have shows that we watch together. We did just finish watching Friday night, um, the final, no, Saturday night, last night. We watched the final episode of the second season of Reacher. It was amazing. I really, really, really like that show. Um, it's on Amazon Prime. Um, it was just really, really good. So we have now finished that show. Um, we actually have now finished all of the shows that we've been watching. Um, we have caught up with and or finished. Um, we're just awaiting new seasons. That was, the, I guess, the advantage of the writer's strike is that it put everything kind of on hold. So we were able to catch up on stuff that we were watching. Um, so a couple of shows that we watched, like Fire Country Season 2 is coming out in February. I think Seal Team is coming out soon as well for the 8th season, or maybe it's the 7th. I can't remember. Um... There's other shows that we want to watch. Rabbit Hole. We've been talking about watching Ozarks. Um, so, yeah. So, that's kind of what we've been doing, what we've been watching. I've been debating on starting another marathon of Grey's Anatomy from start to finish. I tend typically do that once a year. Um, but I haven't gotten there yet. So, I haven't made that decision to do that yet. Um, okay. I am... Where is, oh, there it is. I'm like, where is this color I am looking for? Um, so I don't listen to anything. I don't do the audiobook thing. Um, I'm not a very big reader, never have been. Um, so I don't do the audiobook thing. Um, I do want to go to the movies and see Beekeeper. I'm hoping maybe we can do that this week. Sorry, I needed a drink. So... I do not currently have any doctor's appointments this week other than my standard therapy appointment. Um, what is coming up with my channel? Well, tomorrow there is going to be a post review of Done Decorating, the little um, snacky Christmas Advent peanuts uh, canvas that came out. I finished that in a day, five hours. That was my third completion of the month. So the post review for that is, it's all loaded. It'll go live at midnight tonight. Um, so that will be done. I am hoping to start filming. Someone um, left me a comment on one of my um, videos this weekend about, I had asked if anyone would want, be interested in me doing a stash video. Well, only one person messaged that yes, they would be interested in seeing my stash. But they gave me the idea of doing um, like mini stash videos, like once a week, I show like five to 10 diamond paintings in my stash and kind of do it as a, as a series and talk about why I purchased the kits at the time, whether or not I'm still in love with the kits, whether I'm planning on keeping them or if I see myself de-stashing them. Did I buy them for a specific reason? What made me look into? So I'm very intrigued by that idea. Um, she actually gave me a title for it to call it Heather Stash and, Ch Stash and Chat. And I kind of really like that idea. So um, let me know down in the comments whether or not you think that'd be kind of cool. And if you'd like to see that. Because um, that will help me decide whether I'm going to do it. I should have a small shop haul. I have um, a package from DP with Sparklers that's supposed to arrive tomorrow or, or Tuesday. Tomorrow or Tuesday, I can't remember. Um, tomorrow, I was supposed to get a Bella Art Diamonds order that I've been desperately waiting for because it has some really awesome things that I can't wait to show you guys. Um, that was supposed to be delivered yesterday, but they postponed it for some reason, and now it is scheduled to arrive tomorrow. So hopefully that will come. Um, I do have a couple of Timu orders that I'm waiting for that just have some specialty projects and some diamond painting adjacent 
things. Um, I think that's the term that Katie uses over at Diamonds and Washi. So I am going to steal that because I like that. So sorry, Katie. I hope that's okay. Um, but, you know, some special projects that don't require licensing and, and you know, things, things like that. Things of that nature. Am I doing the right color? Yes, I am. Okay. Sorry. Um, brain fog. But um, I have some packages from Enablers Outpost that I am waiting for. Um, I have an unboxing I would like to do uh, this week. So, and you never know when I'm going to get a wild hair and decide that I want to do another whip and chat. Obviously, I need to do the second part, part two of my mental health and diamond painting series. So that will go up on Sunday. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot of things. If I manage to finish this kit, then I will have that as well. Um, there's a how-to video I want to do on how to, and I'm using this term lightly, dry mount your canvases at home. I bought all the supplies to do it on Saturday because I, I, if you follow, I, I made a lot of posts on a lot of different um, diamond painting groups yesterday of items I picked up from Hobby Lobby that I had mounted onto foam board. And whereas the price was extremely reasonable, Hobby Lobby has decided that they want more money. So they've added a mounting fee to this price of what they've been doing. And so it is literally quadrupling the price. Something that cost me $4 this past time is going to cost me $24. So that's actually six times the amount. Um, I, I can't. I can't afford that. I mean, I literally spent, I think it was $42 having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine. Nine canvases mounted to foam board and it cost me $42. If I were to take those nine pieces in today to have done, it would have cost me $224. Yeah, I, I can't do that. So I need to learn how to do this by myself. Um, so that was kind of a bummer. They've lost my business in terms of that. So I will not be taking, I mean, I brought with me like four canvases to have this, to drop off and have the same thing done. Um, I ended up leaving just one and it's one that I know that I'm going to frame and I want to hang in my living room. So I had them do the mounting part. I'm going to try and find a frame on Amazon or at a thrift store and do myself. So I am looking at doing a how-to to show you guys how you can do this yourself and for relatively inexpensive. Um, I don't know whether that will be this week or next week, simply because, I mean, it, to be honest, it might be a couple of weeks because I need to have use of both arms. So if I have a day this week where I am not having pain in my right hand and having this nerve pain, then I'll be able to do it. Um, but if I am having this nerve pain, Lord knows how long it's going to be till I'm actually going to be able to physically do that video and shoot and share it with you. So... Yeah. All right. We are at the end of this video. Let me talk about the give back um, drawing that I was doing. Um, I announced a few whipping chats ago that since I had reached 100 subscribers, which as the at the filming of this, I was at 162. Thank you all so much. You have no idea how much this means to me. I do want to give a shout out to Lenore. Um, she was the first person to actually utilize my link and buy me some snowballs. Um, the site is buy me a coffee, but you can pick your quote drink of choice. And I picked snowballs and she bought me five snowballs to help support my channel. And I wanted to give her a lovely shout out and say thank you. Actually a funny story. Um, Lenore was one of the first people that I de-stashed to 
um, this summer, and she, I was the first person that she bought a D stash from the U.S. from. It was a wonderful transaction. Um, it was my first experience with shipping international, and um, it was it was very nice to reconnect with her, and it was very thoughtful of her to take the time and have the generosity to buy me five snowballs to help support my channel. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is very much appreciated. Obviously, there is no pressure for anybody to buy me a coffee or buy me a snowball. The link is in the description down below. Um, I have thought about starting a Patreon, but right now with my arm and my back issues, I don't know that I have it in me to keep up with like doing a daily, you know, a weekly vlog and all of that stuff too, to offer different things to you guys. So I don't want to start something and then not be able to follow through with it right now. So I'm just kind of sticking with the buy me a coffee for now. Um, it is a way for you to make a one-time donation of however little or much you want to my channel. All of the money is going to go back into my channel. It will help me um, pay for supplies, um, pay for new audio equipment, um, pay to try out small shops to let you know, be able to do giveaways, um, and all of that. So it is greatly, greatly appreciated. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Lenore. Um, there is a patron, um, one of my subscribers, Laureen, who has done something. She emailed me. My email is always down in the description. At least it should be, or you can find it on my channel. Um, she emailed me that she wanted to purchase some diamond arts for my daughter, Samantha, um, to do for her birthday for next month. So she has told me that she has picked some stuff out. I gave her my address and she said they, they are ordered and they are on my way to me. Um, thank you very much. That is amazing. Um, I have decided to put myself on a serious no buy. I will be some of the, a lot of the paintings that I'm going to be going through, I will be doing D stashes for and on. Um, my tastes have changed. My stash has gotten out of control. Part of my borderline personality is I have a shopping addiction and I've gotten myself in a little in over my head with um, Afterpay and Sezzle. And I need to rein that back in. So I need to de-stash some of my stuff to make some money, to pay some bills, and to very strongly put myself on a no-buy. I have a few exceptions to my no-buy that my husband and I have discussed. Um, any Lorenz birds that pop up will not be on a no buy. They will be purchased immediately. Um, any color out of place, which is my new favorite artist, will be immediate buys when they come out as well. Randall Spanglers will be hit or miss. I have a huge stash of Randall Spanglers. I need to thin it out. I had the idea in my head that I needed to collect them all, not realizing at the time how many there are. And whereas I love the draglings, do I really need every kit that has the draglings in it? Don't think so. So, I need to make some changes regarding that. So, whereas you do a great service just by subscribing to my channel, um, that option is there if you would like to help in any other way. I greatly appreciate it. Um... Now to going, getting back to the give back. So I announced a couple of uh, whipping chats ago that you needed to leave a comment with a certain word in it down in the, in the comments to be entered into the drawing that I will be doing. It is open until January 31st. Um, the comment needed to be left in that whipping chat, but I am extending that to this whipping chat as well. So, you need to leave me a comment with the word event in the title. Or in you need to leave a sentence in the comments using the word event. 
Tell me whether or not you've ever participated in an event. Are you participating in a diamond painting event now? Um, are you participating in one in the future? Have you participated in one in the past? I, I'd love to know. So let me know. And if you want to enter the giveaway, it is one entry per person. So if you commented in the other one, you're not going to get a second entry for the next time. What the give back is going to be for me hitting 100 subscribers is going to be a, um, if you are U.S. based, you will receive a package for me that will contain a Bella Art Day Nicole tray, a large 3.1 tray. It will contain um, either an acrylic or hand-turned resin pen. I haven't decided yet. It will have a cover minder in it. And what was the other thing? And it will have a pack of putty in it from Randis Crafty Corner. So that is what is going to be included. I'm unemployed, people. I'm on disability, so I can't I can't do huge, huge giveaways right now. But that is what will be included. Um, if you are in the US and you win, um, that is what you you will have the option of receiving that that gift gift pack from me, or you can instead choose to get a $20 gift certificate to Bella Art Day Nicole for you to do your own shopping. I think I said 20, maybe I said 25. I don't know, I have to go back, 20 or $25. Um, if you are international, you will only have the option of the gift card. Um, so yeah, so that is what I am giving away. Um, it will close at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on January 31st. And then my first whip and chat on, for February will include the drawing for the winner. And the drawing will be done based off of those who left comments in either that whip and chat or this one using the word event in a sentence. So thank you very much. When I hit 250, we are going to do another giveaway. So there will be another give back um, when we hit 250, and I will have to figure out what that is going to be. Um, so, all right, guys. Well, I almost finished this section. I only have this little bit left um, to do, and that will make one, two, three, four sections that I got done tonight, guys. So all left-handed. Woohoo! I'm going to pat myself on the back with my left hand. Yay! All right, guys. Thank you for sticking with me for this long. I'm sorry this one kind of ran long. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful week. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope that you are engaging in self-care and doing something that makes you sparkle and shine every day. Please know that you are never alone. I am always here for you. Please don't ever hesitate to reach out on Messenger. I am Heather Hope Warburg on Facebook. Feel free to send me a friend request. You can message me on Instagram. My link is in the description and you can follow me on Instagram. I try to post daily updates of my projects on Instagram and I do advertise when I put new videos up. Not all of them all the time, but the really important ones in my opinion um, up. So... I'd love to have you come follow me on Instagram. That would be amazing. I am closing in on 200 Instagram followers, which is huge. I only started my Instagram and my YouTube channel in September of 2023. So I'm very encouraged and impressed with how well it is going. And I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from all of you. Um, Alyssa, the Diamond Stitcher, I don't know if you're watching or not. But once again, thank you for your advice and help. I hope... Please let me know whether or not the videos are better now that I'm filming in landscape and not in portrait mode. Yes, I, she told me, rookie mistake. So thank you, thank you, thank you for letting me know that. Shay, if you're watching, thank you. I appreciate all of your encouraging words. Um, if you just heard the door open, Atlas has decided to come and grace me with his presence. Um, so I'm going to need to get up and shut the door because my husband's watching TV downstairs and it's kind of loud. So... Anyway, thank you all for being here. I hope you have a wonderful week. Please take care of yourself. Know that I am always here. You can reach me in any of those ways. You can email me. Thank you, Lenore. 
Thank you, Laureen, for your generosity. Um, thank you, Laura. Again, I, it's all the L names. I tell you, I need more friends with, with first names that begin with L. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, and Laura, thank you for the gift for my daughter. Um, I can't wait to share it with all of you um, when I give it to her for her birthday the end of next month. Um, I'm hoping to be able to have some of the kits that Lorene is sending for Samantha um, completed as well so that I can give her a couple of things. So thank you all so very much. Um, I will talk to you all soon. Take care of yourself. Stay safe, stay warm, and know that you are loved. Bye, everybody.